everyone and welcome to part two of our painting the old barn um, the first uh, lesson whatever you want to call it tutorial I think went really well we, we began to trace out and see where things were in relation to other things and we got that lovely little vignette um, across on the left hand side of the trees and the lake and uh, the, the mountains in the far distance but today we're going to have a go, um, we're going to sort the clouds out because if you remember I was having problems with those because of the golden open. It was just pulling the blue through the white every time I put it on. So they're properly dry now and uh, we'll put those in Then there's a tree behind the old barn that I want to put in before we put the roof on. Um, and we'll see how far we get anyway in an hour, but you know, let's get cracking. So, first thing to do, I think, is to rectify, well, not rectify, but um, reinstate, let's say, these clouds. And I'm going to do it in my uh, ordinary Sennelier abstract uh, paint, not the golden open. I don't need it to be open um, for these. I just want to put the white in. I don't think I need white for anywhere else. So there's no point using the, the open for that. So let's... Put them in. Getting a bit caked up around here. Yuck. Let's put a little bit out there and see where we get to. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Handman. Running out of room on the table. So I'm going to use the same uh, tool as I used yesterday, my dear foot stippler. It's a bit damp because I've just been using it for something else. So I just want to dry it out a little bit on a towel. Now the last thing I was doing with this was, guess what colour? Yellow, yellowy green. And I rinsed it out under the under running water. And I thought that it was fairly clean, actually. But doesn't it just go to show you that what the residual paint that a brush holds? I'll do a little video one day very soon to show you how to wash your brushes properly um, and give them a nice, nice day at the spa, as it were. Uh, so anyway, we've got this dry now and it's clean enough for us. We've left, I think, all the yellow paint behind. So we'll just load the brush up with some white. And we'll come in here to the tops of the clouds and give them some nice white billowiness, is that word it is now. And you can see in clouds you get sort of brighter white bits, almost where one bit's sitting on top of another and they're, they're really bright white. Sometimes you get bits of grey along the bottom or whatever. But not in our sky today. Our sky is clear blue with these little, two little fluffy clouds. Um, and that's, you know, they're not going to give us any rain. We're going to have a lovely day today. I'm going to come back into that bit at the top there. I really want that to be nice and bright white. But not not a uniform brightness all the way through. Clouds just aren't really like that. I say clouds aren't really like that. It's you think of a shape, a size, a colour, and you will have seen a cloud in it. Um, so I think I was saying to you yesterday. Sometimes when we're driving along. So handy on myself, we'll look at the sky and we'll just say to each other, you could never paint that, it's totally unrealistic. Uh, and yet there it is in nature. So it obviously is realistic. Let's get a nice bright bit running up through there. And 
can leave some these are, um, not so thick bits if you like. Now I'll come back into the bottom of that with a, a damper brush and pull it pull it down a little bit. Um, but I'll just well I've still got my, my brush relatively dry. I'll just go into this one here and build up the white. There are whole books written on the subject of painting clouds. So um, if you really want to get into this, cloud painting, there's loads of research out there for you that you can do. Um, certain, you kind of get to know certain artists by the way they do their clouds, to be honest. You know, if you follow any other of the artists on YouTube, their tutorials, you kind of know what clouds they're going to do, uh, and they always do. Nothing wrong with that. You, I'm sure, you will establish your own, your own kind of clouds. You have your own ones for stormy skies, and your own ones for fair weather and whatever. Today, I'm going to be using uh, a, a new not new to me, but it's new to you, a uh, new gadget called the wet palette. So it, the whiteness sort of falls away as we come down towards the bottom in my clouds, at any rate. It just falls, falls away to a sort of level, level base. How level am I there with them? Are they horizontal or are they still going up? Well, not pedantic. really that pedantic, but I don't want to mm -hmm. be sitting looking at them later on thinking, mm. but, I mean, does it matter if they're going up? No, I think they look absolutely cloud like. Do you? That is so nice. Let's just get some lovely yeah, white bits in there. Probably the, um, the biggest mistake people make when they're doing clouds, particularly in the beginning, is trying to make them too solid. Yeah. You know, they yeah. are ultimately only comprised of water vapour. Yeah. You know, they're not they're not a solid thing that's just hanging in the sky. Yeah, know? that's right. You can't paint them as if they're just a shape, that's the shape and that's it. Yeah. Well I I quite like those. I'm quite happy with those. You know, don't forget with these, as with anything else that we paint, it's paint, it's acrylic paint, you can paint over it, start again. I've got a mark there that I've just put down from my finger, so I'm just I'm trying to uh, hide it behind the clouds. Hide it behind <laughs> the clouds, yeah. So there we are. I think they're quite nice. They've got nice sort of thick, fluffy parts. Let's have a look at them on the monitor. Yeah, I think they look quite nice. I'm quite pleased with those. So, now then, uh, I was going to tell you about my wet palette. This is it. It's um, a piece of really cheap and nasty thin plastic, um, which I'm sure they could have made slightly better had they tried. Um, but it would have put the price up and then people wouldn't buy it, blah, blah. Uh, and it comprises of this, this plastic makes a tray. And in the bottom of the tray, you get, um, it's a kind of a, there we are. It's um. How do you describe that? It's like um, like a fiber paper. Yeah, type it's, it's fairly fairly thick, spongyish layer, and you get you know so many with it when you buy the thing and you can buy replacements. Um, and then on top of that is this sheet of um very thin paper. Membrane. Membrane indeed, and then you. Put water on it until the bottom spongy base has absorbed all the water it possibly possibly can but don't have any water swimming around in it otherwise your paint will get into it and you'll have watery paint and it's a nightmare and then it's got a lid that goes on top of that now i only use this with my golden opens i know the opens stay open longer anyway um but that, that's you can use it for your heavy body paint whatever but just as a, 
I, I used this, the last time I used this for Golden Opens was, I would say, at least three weeks ago, wasn't it? Yeah. And I, put, I had my colours out, put the lid on it, and I actually didn't open it again. I didn't revisit it until today. And the paint was still very, very usable. It was still wet. Um, so it's a great thing for saving you money. And I have to buy it in the first place and whatever, but it really does keep your paint for a long time. So that's what I will be using today. I'm just checking that my clouds are looking all right before I uh, scrape this white up. Because I want to put my wet palette there where that, where that palette is. Oh, I think the only other thing that I wanted to add before I moved on to anything else is just along this tiny little vignette that we did yesterday. I'm just going to put two drops out of that um, fluid in Roma and I'm going to get a small brush. Hopefully this will be small enough. And when you look at this, there's a, a like a tiny little bit of lakeside or whatever just there. And I just want to um, sort of state that, really. Oh, no, I'm on the wrong side. Oh, well, that doesn't matter. It's right anyway. It comes along here. And it just comes, comes back into there. I just think it must be a little bit of the pond, pond bank or something. Now, if you really want to be pedantic, usually I don't, but I so love this little vignette. There are two little fence posts, and if you blow this image up on your computer, you will see that there are some wires running across them. So, shall we have a go? <laughs> Um, no, I'll be alright. So the, how high is it? It's not quite the height of the of the lake. And that one is just the other side there. And then for the for the wires, I'm going to be using this ultra 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 fine brush. Can you see how fine that is? It's it's really fine. So get some moisture on it, pick up your paint, exactly the same way as I've shown you for any of the small brushes, the small rounds, or any of the rounds that we use in fact. So there we are, so we've got, we should have a very small amount of paint, but you know, I'm just going to have to turn this slightly because it's too fine. It's too fine for my canvas. I'm going to have to use a slightly thicker brush. Don't, for heaven's sake, leave a brush that fine in water. Um, you'll just ruin it. Let's go back to this one that uh, we were using for the fence posts. Let's see if I can get a nice fine line. On that one. That's probably fine enough. I mean, after all, if you're going to go to the bother of putting it in. Might as well see it. I'm not too worried about these being straight because I'm imagining it's just sort of all through. So there we are, we've got our fence in and that really is all I can possibly do to that. I can't load it up anymore with anything. So, uh, our next thing that we're going to do is this tree. I'm trying, as I said to you yesterday, I'm trying to go from the back, the very back, which is the sky, coming forward, 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 forward. And the next thing in the background that we hit is this tree, which is just behind our old uh, cabin. Barn. I was just going to ask you what we've called this painting. Barn, isn't it? Um, so I'm going to I'm going to put the image up my image over and I'm just going to transfer a few of the lines just just to give me a help. 
see how far it goes over, etc, etc. I'm using the, um, I can't remember what you call this now, frisk, is it? Frisk. Frisk. down, please. Trays down, yeah. These are dry, so we're all right. We couldn't have done this if we'd used the open because they would still be wet and the tray stand paper would have stuck to it and it would have ended up as a disaster. So it's dry, so we're all right. Right then, this comes, it seems to have quite a thick uh, trunk and it comes up like that. Now I'm not sure if there's another one here but I really can't be sure so all I'm going to do is just put some branches in um, and they just kind of go up this far out as far as that as long as we've got some lines to give us a bit of a clue and then the thicker part of the stem seat brown trunk, trunk. <laughs> <laughs> Needs to come up this way and it kind of goes off the painting and then it comes up here. Carry on, we might have to put this out with subtitles. <laughs> and I think what the farmer's done is he's come along with his chainsaw and he's locked the top off this there because that's a thick trunk and then after that we've got these very small branches. So I think he's just lopped it off there and this is all new growth. That's what I'd say. So if you want a kind of biology lesson, <laughs> right? Um, that's what I'd say. So I think we're all right there. Nobody did ever guess you used to work for the Forestry Commission, would yeah, you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> In your early career? I certainly did. Right, well, I think that's probably given us enough hints to go out. I'm just having a good look at this, trying to make sense of it. This is the edge of our frame, that's the edge of our frame, that's the uh, top of the barn. Um, so as long as, I mean we can go over any of those uh, edges because it's all going to be in in the frame so we're all right i'm just what i'm wondering now is whether i should do i think i will i'll do it not in the golden open but just do it in the uh, fluid acrylics then it will dry then we can get our leaves on top of it otherwise we're going to have a similar problem that the trunk and heavy branches will still be wet so we won't be able to get our leaves on it so i'll just put a little bit more of that out um, and I'll get my trusty quarter inch angle shader. That's a good one, I think. Make sure it's damp. So you make sure it's damp because it, once the filaments are wet, it allows the paint to go up into the brush more, so you get a better load of paint each time. That's that's kind of why you do that. It's it's a capillary reaction. It is indeed a capillary reaction. Full of technical terms today. We certainly are. I don't know where that. I don't know where my tree comes from. No, this is would a big you, branch here. Would you like to establish them with the? No, it's all right. So this is the the big one that stops where where I think Farmer Giles or his American equivalent. Who do you reckon Farmer Giles is in America? Walt? Walt's a good name, isn't Farmer it? Farmer Walt. Yeah. And every time you watch some American programme and they go off into the countryside somewhere, it's always, oh, here is Walt. <laughs> I mean, no offence to anybody mm -hmm. if your dad, brother, son, whatever is called Walt. I really don't. It's like Giles in this country, Farmer Giles. Giles uh, in this country is quite um it's quite a middle class sort of name isn't it middle class connotations and that's because farmers in this country actually 
it's changed now, of course, but uh, historically farmers didn't get the hands dirty at all. It was the, the workers that got the hands dirty and Farmer Giles walked around with his fancy cap on, his tweed jacket and his lovely walking stick, pointing out, you know, to anybody who was with him, you know, these are my sheep and my cattle and whatever. Gentleman farmer. Gentleman farmer, without a doubt. Um, well, I'll just put these little thin ones in while we're here. So maybe Walter's a bit like that. Maybe Walter's, you know, a bit of a gent, for all we know. Could be. Chevy pickup truck. Yeah. A Chevy pickup. Yeah. So I'm just going to put some thinner, thinner ones in as we get along to the to the outside. You know, it's common sense, but I'll just say it. The, the further to the ground you go, the thicker the limbs on the tree get. So that's a good thing to remember. And I think it's accurate. Is it accurate? Pretty much so. These, are, these um, branches actually are pretty much covered over with... Uh, with leaves, which definitely look to me like it's autumn. I'm covering over a lovely cloud. But you know, sometimes you just have to. And another general rule is branches always go upwards, unless it's a monkey puzzle tree. Well, yeah, that's true. Have you ever climbed a monkey puzzle tree? They say they're unclimbable. Have you ever tried it? Seems like something you would have tried. Chances are they were up. If you're referring to from a monkey. <laughs> What's it uh, implying you're a monkey? <laughs> then I'm puzzled. <laughs> What's it? I, I genuinely was not implying you were a monkey. I, th I think I think I'm gonna put this trunk in here. Can't actually see where it is. I may have transferred it, I may not have done. Um I kind of suspect that I didn't. And I think that's probably all trunk in there. And it's going to come out a little bit over over the line of our frame, which Mr. Handyman has identified, and I think he's correct. We're looking out from so all the surrounding area. This this here, um, Mr. H thinks it's a box car. Do you want to explain what a box car is for the English folks? Or British folk? I'd say railway carriage of a good wagon. If you watch American movies, the hobos are normally riding the rails and they have big doors on the side that they climb into and shut behind them. Mm -hmm. It's basically a, a, a box with a big slidey door on the side towed behind a train. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And it's obviously an abandoned one. It's it implies that it's moving at all. But people, that would be interesting. But, but, but I guess people use old ones as, as chicken coops and yeah. and sheds and workshops and yeah. all sorts because it's a useful box shape. Yeah, and they probably get them cheap. Uh, and it's the name, I guess. Box Car Willie. That's it. So I'm really kind of doing this. Um, Casey Jones. Oh, I loved Casey Jones when I was little. I love Casey Jones. Do, 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 do. Cannonball Express. And I also loved Daktari. Do you remember Daktari? Yeah. Do you remember Judy the Monkey? Clarence the Monkey. Clarence the Monkey. Yeah, oh my goodness, I loved that. I was always so sad when that finished because I had to wait a week for it to come round again. Your kids today, they don't know the bone, do they? How long do you, how, how many programs do you think they watch that they have to actually wait a week for it to come round again? Uh, not. None. That's what I say to him. Puts a big fella there. Because back in the day, we only had three TV channels to choose from. <laughs> and come, come half past ten, all those went off the air. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, that is. Right, so I think we've. Uh, established some 
some branches that are, that are fairly credible in there. Um, you can take your time, do more, less, whatever. You can put shading on on the uh, trunk if you want to, but I don't. I don't actually think it's necessary because we've got all this uh, leafage going on on top of it. So I'll give that a good clean out. An autumnal feel, I think we were. It, it definitely has an autumnal feel. We've got that vibe. Yeah, it has. You know, when you when you look at this grass, it looks like it's dying back, doesn't it? It, it looks like it's more dying back than, than growing, mm -hmm. starting to grow. Yeah. And when you look at this tree, I mean, those colours are... Well, they're not spring, are they? No. Not in the spring of its life. So we'll just make sure that that's dry, which it is. Um, and the question is, shall I use my opens? Yeah, I'll use my I'll use my opens. I'm very precious with my opens. I don't know why I'm more precious with them than I am with uh, the ordinary heavy body paint, but I am. The cost. <laughs> well, they're all expensive though, aren't they? Yes. Golden paints are are expensive. Well, they don't start about seven pounds a tube. Yeah, and that's if you want one. white. Yeah. Um, you know, if you want the the professional artist's colours, uh, doesn't matter who you buy, golden. Liquitex Professional, Matisse, any of them um, that are the, the top of their range, the professional colours, they come in things called series um, and with golden and all, all makers really, the titanium white, zinc white, whatever, that's series one and then the cost goes up and you get to series two and up and up and, up and you get to series seven, eight. Um, and by which stage, you know, you might as well just go and buy a bar of gold, to be honest. But it's all to do with the cost of the, the pigments, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the and cadmium, usually the cadmium, yeah. The cad is the most expensive. All the cad ones are a fortune. Anyway, we're doing a lot of gassing today instead of cracking on, really. Talking of um, the cost of these, I'm going to put out some cad yellow. This is cad yellow primrose. Um, it's not kind of a hue I'm familiar with, but it's gorgeous. So we need some of that, so I'll just put some of that out on the palette. Um, we also need some yellow ochre. And I'm going to put out another colour that you may not be familiar with. I certainly wasn't. I bought it just to see what what it was really and it's a colour called Mars Yellow and it's a sort of burnt sienna type colour um, it, it's, it's a nice colour and I think it's I think it will help us today it's kind of orange but in the in the yellow ochre field yellow ochre family so we'll give that a go and see how we get on so basically we are just gonna I'm not looking at that and putting leaves exactly where they are on that because that's just daft or it is to me if you want to do that do it similarly if you want to make your whole painting spring or summer equally fine put green leaves on there if it's if you want to do spring put bright green leaves on and, and do the grass in a bright green do this tree in bright green and suddenly you'll have a springtime uh, picture but I'm, I'm sticking sort of with that so I think the colour that I want on first is a yellow ochre, it's a sort of medium, medium range. There's no green left on my tree. There's not a bit of green, they're all kind of, they're all turned on, turned. So load your brush with your um, yellow ochre, yeah. And we'll just, we'll start out at the tips, putting some branches, some, some leaves on. And it hasn't got that many leaves, so don't get carried away. And a lot of the branches are just are untouched by leaves at the end. There is a big body of branches here and here. 
I'll address them once we get some of these smaller groups done. And don't forget, this is just a base coat. Um, you know, don't don't panic. I'll come back in with brighter, a brighter colour and a darker colour. So here's where the big group is. And I'll just this is pretty much right on the on the edge. So I'll just put some there just to um involve that edge in in the picture. I'm putting quite a bit over there because I put a very um stupid branch there. One that didn't look particularly branch like. So I'm giving it a lot of a lot of leaves. <laughs> to cover up my mistake. Right, so down here, from sort of here, where is it? Here, there is quite a, quite a lot still hanging on the on the tree. You see, when we're going over the clouds, the white behind it it really makes it uh, a, a a much more orangey orange. Well, it's yellow walk. I'm just using a quarter inch, um, quarter inch angle shader, and I'm using the what they call the toe of the brush. If you if you imagine that's a foot, there's the toe, there's the heel. This edge is called a chisel. This bit here where it goes into the metal is called a ferrule. Um, but for what I'm doing now, I'm using the toe. I'm just pressing and pressing and pressing the toe of the. Of the of the brush into the painting to get these almost sort of leaf shapes really. They're certainly nearly not. And then it's come out almost over the whole of that. It's quite dense in here. You do have to load quite often because uh, it is right, you know, right up just a tiny bit on the toe. So I quite like this bit, we can see the sky through it, but we're getting the feeling that uh, autumn is upon us. Over onto there. I'd like to see it just above this root. Find these even more. When I'm looking at them, they look quite uh, quite yellow, but I see that on the monitor they're not showing up very yellow. Um, just odd little bits, you know, just random. Random ones are not always at the end because it's very often the ones at the end um, that don't get the food supply first, and so they die and fall off first. So um, if you're painting an autumnal tree, it's often a good idea not to paint your branches, your flower leaves right on the end. I'm going to go in now with um, with a brighter yellow. And see if we can bring some of this uh, yellow ochre into life. Yellow, of course, as you know, because I've told you a million times, it's a transparent colour. Um, and so it's difficult to get it to state itself. Now, do you remember earlier when I told you yesterday, yesterday, the last lesson, about the light, where the light was coming from? And here, in our painting, it's coming from this side. Well, actually, it's coming from here, really. So it's making everything that it hits here, like this side of the trees, this side of our um, barn, and this side of our tree lighter. So that's the side that we want to make lighter with the yellow. If that makes sense to you, I hope it does. So it's it's not every bit of, of uh, yellow ochre that we want to hit with this yellow. 
we want it to be highlight. Not all over it, just a bit that would catch the sun. A little bit, just have the right orientation to catch the sun. Over the cloud, which is white, it's um, it's actually coming out a lovely colour. Just here and there, just brightening it up a little bit with the light falling on it. And I don't, I don't really believe that the light's coming on here too much. I don't think that's probably sufficient for, for back there. Now if I'm going to leave this as it is, it needs some attention because it's just a flat brown blob. I also need to do something with this because I've got a branch here hanging in midair with nothing at all on it. So I'll just uh, take some of the yellow ochre. I've still got some of that um, primrose, card primrose. I'll just put some Down in there. Now let's have a look at that on the monitor. Oh, this all looks like a like it's got no definition. It certainly does have some definition. Right, I think we need to be a bit more bit bit more generous with our leaves. I didn't want to I didn't want to give it too many leaves, but I think I haven't given it enough. So I'll go back and and we'll put some more leaves in there. Right, well, the problem that I'm having here is um, a one that I should have preempted really. The colours that I'm using, the Mars yellow, the uh, yellow ochre, and the uh, Cad Primrose, are all very, very transparent colours. And I'm trying to paint on top of this bloom. So, what's happening is, I mean, although I can actually see the colours here, I can see that on the monitor, they're coming out a sort of just a green colour, which is what you'd expect with yellow on top of blue. So in order to, I mean, this part here that's on top of the cloud, you can see those colours and they're, they're fine uh, on the screen. But I want them to be able to read better. So what I'm going to do is mix up um, some titanium white, which is opaque, through these colours and then go back and reinstate those leaves. Um, you know, we found this out now. That's great. You don't need to do that mistake. You can go straight into your colours that you've mixed with titanium white. Um, I, I also want to say to you, don't get too involved without sort of checking where where you're up to. The our box car comes along there, and it comes along. Here, then it comes along here. It's the, oh well, this is the roof of the barn. So that's pretty much all you can see of this tree. So, um, you know, paint with that in mind that that's the shape that you're going to be left with. I think it makes a difference when you can see it edged off, which we won't ultimately see it edged off till the very, very end, and that's going to be an exciting day. Right, I'll just get a little trowel and get some titanium white out on there. And let's mix some up and see if we can't make this, make a better job of this. And put some out for each colour. Because actually the grass, if, if you have a look at the photograph, the grass has got these sort of colours in it as well. So I'll just mix on my wet palette these colours. Try and get a bit of opacity um, so we can actually see the leaves that we're putting in. That Mars yellow is mixed up to a lovely, lovely orangey colour, actually. It's perfect for the job. Mix some yellow ochre with the titanium white. That's a nice mid tone. 
through from this white through this cloud yellow. Yellow like this, particularly I find, the sort of ones that tend towards the lemon are the worst for being trans. They're all bad, but um, these ones are really transparent. So there we are. Let's give this a try and see. You can see now that we've altered the colours. Um, we sort of knocked them back. But once we get a layer of these colours on, we can then go back in, if we should we wish, with these ones that we haven't mixed up for a bit more, uh, a bit of difference and a bit more liveliness. Let's see. Right. So I'll start off again with the darkest colour, which is this Mars yellow uh, mixed with the titanium white. And I'll just, it's the same, same process. Now that looks a bit frightening, but two things. One, it's going to dry back, and the other is it's having two other coats on top of it. So I, th I think that's I think that's all right. I'm, I'm okay with that. And just as a reminder, of course, the, the colour that comes out of the tube is the hue. Yeah. Because we've added white to them, mm -hmm. we've created tints. We have. You've been listening. <laughs> and if we were to add black to them, we would create shades. So shades, hues and tints have specific meanings, even though they're usually used interchangeably. Well, I knew the smarty pants. Go right to the top of that class. Teacher's pet. Well, hmm. <clears throat> it's things like this that really do take the time. Um, you know, an hour's tutorial on doing a blooming tree. No, I don't want that. I want to be doing more with you. But we have to get these things right. I mean, actually, if you look at it, there's not a whole lot else to it. There's this tree, there's the, the barn, there's some grass. So, you know, what we have got, we really need to try and get right. I'm giving it a bit more foliage this time, um, not not massively, but a bit more. I just want to see it. So just come up over that branch there, and that I think is hidden in the frame. So I think that's made a huge difference already. So you know, great, excellent. I'm just going to rinse my brush out in some fluid retarder. Remember I told you the last lesson? If you're using golden opens, use fluid retarder. If you use water, then you knock back the time of the uh, open staying workable to the, the time that water is workable, which is ordinary acrylics and virtually nothing. So moving on now to this, uh, to the yellow ochre. And there's not a huge lot of difference there, but enough. There's enough. You know, go some places where you haven't been with the uh, Mars yellow. I'm not sure if that's showing up on the, the uh, monitor. But you can see what I'm doing. I'm still just using the toe of my uh, angle shader here. Now, I think I said it to you the last time, but it bears repeating. If you only buy one brush, if you can only afford one brush, buy a quarter inch angle shader because it will, it will do you a lot of service. Because I use it like this on the toe quite a lot, I wear mine out. <laughs> and the other thing I do is I paint on canvas. And that's another thing that does really wear your brushes out. I would recommend before you start painting on canvas, and I forgot to do it on this occasion, is to just run the sandpaper, you know, not a really rough sandpaper, but rub some sandpaper over your canvas. Um, they come pre-gessoed. And whether it's sticky up bits of the canvas are, 
then the gesso is also sticking up. So if you just rub it over with a bit of um, sandpaper, you won't have that problem of not being able to get into into the hollows, if you like. So we'll just um, I'll just wipe that off and go into this lovely primrose yellow. Mr. Handyman's going to put coal on the fire, so um, oh, it's going to go outside and get coal. Blimey! What happens if it goes wrong when you're not here? <laughs> You'll have to put it right before I get back. So this is the um, the primrose with titanium white in it, and you can see it's actually lost a lot of its sparkle. It's got no sparkle left, but it is serving the purpose of being a highlight and we can come back in again later with a, a sparkly top coat. But I'm actually beginning to like this now. I think it's reading more like a, a nice tree. You don't just go over and over the same, the same things. Um, you know, be sparing on some, make others bigger. It is it's definitely worth doing the three tones, the dark, the mid-tone and the light. You get you get life into things that way. If you just do it all one tone, um, it, it's dead. It's pretty dead. So this is nice. I mean, a bit of texture on there, which looks lovely. I've got this here, put a little bit there. And here. And pretty much, pretty much done with that, I think. Right, so what I'm going to do now is go in with just the yellow ochre, um, as it is not mixed with the titanium white, just the, just the yellow ochre. Let's see if we can get that to stand out now. Yeah, I think so. Because because these are open paints, they're now working against us in as much as they are open. So I think I'm I might have to leave this until tomorrow till that's or even a little in a little while when it's tacked up. Um and we'll go back in over that and put the, the brights in. But it's okay. return to them like we did with the clouds. Uh, yeah, we can always return to them on the next... We're going to be coming back a while yet. Yeah, there's a fair few yeah. lessons left yet, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> it's the handy man's now putting the coal on the fire, looking after us. Um, so the next thing to do, oddly... To let you know that you're in about 50 minutes. About 50 minutes. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing to do is... One, when we, once we finish this tree, we're going to put the roof in. Um, but I don't want to put it in until we finish the tree because it's too limiting. We might want to come down a bit or whatever with the tree. So we leave the roof just now until that tree's finished. And still working backwards to forwards, this part of the grass here is behind this edge of the old barn. From once you get to here, it's in front of it. Can you see that? Can you see what I mean? So I'm proposing to paint this bit of grass here and then if we go over into that area where the old barn is, doesn't matter, and leave it at that, then put the barn in and then do the rest of the grass. So that's the order of play. This bit of grass here, finish the tree off, put the roof in, Put the rest of the barn in, do the grass, do the frame. Easy as that. So let's have a look at this grass then and see uh, what we need to do. We need, to, with, with grasses, there's two kind of schools of thought. You can either put the dark in first and put your lights on top, or put your lights down and put your darks on top. I find it easier to put the darks down first and then work as many lights as I need over it uh, to to bring it to life. So um, 
very kindly for myself marked in a region here that's darker, this region just here. And that's green, whereas the rest of the grass is this kind of uh, died off. I guess this is an area of weeds, actually. I don't think the farmer's been keeping his weeds down. Um, so for that, we need a green. So let's go for, um, well, if I go for sap green, I've got the same problem in as much as it's really transparent. But I'll use, um, actually, I'll use the chromium oxide green. And I'll just get out a little bit of raw umber as well, um, in case I need to darken that down a little bit in areas which I think I, I might. Now grasses are for people who love detail. I love detail, I really do. I love putting detail in on things like fur on animals, etc. I appreciate that not all of you do that, do enjoy that. And so you, do your best, do what suits you. Like I keep saying, it's your painting, so do what, do what suits you. So let's put this darker area in. Let's just take a little bit of that green and a little bit of the raw umber, make ourselves a nice dark color, but still tending towards green. This will be the background color of the green, if you like. So it comes as a fence post there. So this comes about here and it goes across. Right, that's like that dark colour in there. It's the edge, it doesn't matter if you go over that because obviously you haven't got the frame in yet. Um, so once again, I've got this problem of transparency. We'll leave that, we'll leave that as, it, as it is. We build up around it anyway. Um, and the next thing is any other dark areas, really dark areas that we can see. There's one kind of on the top of there. And I think that's probably it for that. Now, I'm going to put a dark in now that's not quite as dark as that, but darker than the grass that we're going to put in. So I'm just going to use a little bit of um, titanium buff, titan buff actually, gold and colourless shade. And the good thing about all of this is that when we come back in two or three days or a week's time, all my paints will still be here, still alive, still ready to go. So I'm wasting nothing. So I'm just going to use tiny little bit of that. Yeah. Mix it into, into here to give me a slightly lighter but still dark colour. So that's a good colour for the background of the grass. So it, you just really want to paint it in. There's no, no trick or anything to this. It just gets painted in. So it comes down to that darker area that we've got. And you'll find it much easier to put your grasses in when you've got a, a darker area behind um, than the other way around. At least I do. This comes up behind our barn. Don't need to be too exact on that one. It's going to get covered over. And it just comes to the side of the lake or road or whatever happens to be there. Um, and that that's pretty much it. The rest is in front, is in the front of there. 
That's a tiny piece, isn't it? Makes me think that should be bigger. But it isn't. It isn't, so. Right. It looks tiny, don't it? This, this looks like the whole painting thing here. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and if it was, it'd be very good at that. If it was, it would be near to it. It shows the, uh, the importance of observation. Because it's easy to get carried away and paint what you think it should be there. Too easy, too easy, too easy, and the person that hasn't done that hasn't been born. Exactly. So, I'm looking for my deer foot stickler, which has been residing in water, so I need to get as much of that off as I possibly can. There are, I mean, you can use other brushes for it, for this uh, grass. You can use fan brushes. You can use. I, I sometimes use this brush. It's a, it was a brush I got from the local pound shop in a set of three, so it was thirty three pence. Uh, it's for kids, I guess. Um, but it's, it's just, you know, it's just a horrible, horrible brush. But it's really raggedy, and therefore it's good for, good for grasses. But I have my lovely deer foot stippler, so I'll um, use it. First, and we need some green really on there. So I'm going to take a, a more credible green. Now I've got a bay stone. Um, I think a sap green's more sort of colour that I'm after. I might mix it through the chromium oxide green. So it's really up to you. And just take a little bit like that. And now I'm going to go over this. And you won't see very much, to be honest. You won't see very much happening. But it's happening. Different shades um, will give it more life. So that's our sort of green section there. And then as we come up, as we come up here, we get more into the um, sort of, well, there's a section there that looks particularly burnt, but overall it's a sort of um, light orange, really. So I'm with the green still on my on my brush, I'm just going to pick up a bit of that yellow um, ochre. So I've got I've got a mixture now of the green and the yellow ochre. So I'm just going to come up ever so slightly up here and put that in. doesn't want to play because it's still wet and then I'm going to come to this um, this one here which is the yellow ochre with titanium white in it and just pick up a bit of that and I've still got that original colour in my brush and just come above the one that you've just put in not, not all the way don't form a rigid line Let's see if we can get that bit covered there. It doesn't want to cover. That's fine. And then we really want quite a yellow. It's quite a yellowy colour. So what I propose to do is mix a little bit of the cad primrose that we mixed with the titanium white with a little bit of yellow ochre that we mixed with titanium white. Um, still got green on my brush. And we'll put this down. We may need to come back later on and go over these ones that are dry. So this is this colour and it's just a little bit just showing just at the top. And you don't want blades of grass. You can't see blades of grass at this distance. You just want to give the illusion of it being <coughs> grass. There we go. Let's 
can like reinstate that medium <coughs> colour. That's what it wants. A little bit more green, not right, more of that. Let's come back in to here. Oh, it's not dark enough. You really can't see blades of grass at this distance, and it would be um, it would it would look wrong if if you did put them in. Um, you can, however, see this green area here, which perhaps needs a little bit of brightening up. section there we go. a bit of life and we, we still haven't covered all of our dark background but that's fine because we still haven't reached our lightest light yet so uh, I, li I like what we've what we've got there but we do need um a, lot, a much lighter colour. I'll attempt to put it on. It may be that we have to wait till the next one. Let's just take a bit of that um, cat primrose, a tiny bit of that uh, yellow ochre. Just mix them together. We've got that lovely bright, and that's a, a good mix actually for what we want. I hope it accepts it. Don't make them all the same depth down because they just wouldn't be. I'm picking up the green. I'm just going to add a little bit more yellow in there. And a little more of this green mixture for the middle. And then I'm going to have to leave it because I'm rapidly in danger of making mud. Okay, I think we, I think we're not far off achieving what we set out to achieve. Really, I would have liked very much to have got the tree finished uh, today, and then uh, next time we can crack on with the roof, barn, barn, barn roof. <laughs> Um, but I think you can see that the tree actually is beginning to make some sense. It just needs some highlights, but it's still, it still hasn't tacked up yet. This here, when we come back and it's dry, we'll just add some, some real highlights through it. But we've got these lovely dark colours that are the, are the bases of grass. Um, and, and that really is the method that we're going to employ throughout. But of course, as you get closer to the viewer, the blades of grass get more distinct. Here, the, there's there's no distinction. There's just vague bands of colour, really, and we've got a good background in for that. So we haven't, you know, doesn't look like we've done masses today, um, and I'm sorry about that. But I am putting out two videos a week, so you won't have long to wait for the next one. And I really hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learnt by the mistakes that I've made uh, going along the way. Mix your very light transparent colours through a little bit of titanium white first before you put them on, and then you won't have to do it doubly like I like I had to. Um, look forward to next time very very much. I'm very much enjoying this painting actually, and I hope you are too. So see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>
gonna have one more party, one more special occasion. Do it Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, holidays and weekends. We can have one more party. There's more hell we should be racing. One more party now, one more party tonight.